challenge for law enforcement at this point concerning IPv6 is tracking the end user. Um, and there's two issues with that. Uh, first of all, since the blocks of IPv6 are going to be so large, uh, when these addresses are allocated and assigned, uh, we need to ensure that those allocations and those assignments are properly recorded so that when we have a subpoena, court order, legal process, we know exactly who the ISP is to get the logs to track that end user down and ensure that that was the person using that computer at the time of the, the alleged crime. Uh, the second issue um, that was uh, just brought up concerning the carry grade NATs, again, is tracking down the end user. Because with NATs, I guess you can equate it with almost a party line. You're gonna have a thousand users using one IP address, at least that's the forward-facing IP address that we would see. And for law enforcement, you need to be able to determine with absolute certainty who the end user was at that particular time. So that's the issue that we have addressed. Uh, we actually had a meeting at the NCTA uh, with the ISP, the see Jason here, uh, concerning how we're going to do that. Um, we're planning on going to the uh, IETF, um, currently, I think there's about five or six RFCs that concern IP address sharing, carrier grade NATs, logging. Uh, the big issue with the logging is that the logs are going to be so voluminous and it's going to require a lot of storage and that, of course, is very expensive. So how do we get that minimized but yet at the same time being able to get the information which we need, which is the end user information, so we know exactly where to go. So the two issues we have is number one, ensuring that in when those IP addresses are initially allocated, we know who they're allocated, we know who they're assigned to because they're gonna be so large, they're gonna be split up and you can go 20, 30, 40, we, we don't even know how many levels down. Um, and number two, the carry grade NATs, if that's gonna be part of the transitional technologies in the near term, um, we're talking that this may come into full effect within a year and last up to 10 years, we don't know. So that's also something that we're trying to get ahead of to ensure that, you know, when we are investigating cases, we have the proper information that, that we can actually pursue uh, who the end user is.